All right. Okay, if you have not done so already, please um, make a copy of the note catcher. I will put the link in the chat again, because uh, if you just logged on, you won't see it. Okay. All right. Okay, so here is um, a quick video talking about Cell and Castle 5, which is, um, you're going to hear a lot about Castle 5. So if it's something that you um, are not familiar with, you will learn a bit about that in this video. Did you know that there are a set of skills that are equally as important as teaching math, science, English language arts, history, and others? As a matter of fact, many education and psychology researchers have deemed these to be the most important skills we can teach because they are the foundation for any learning to take place. These are SEL skills. SEL stands for social and emotional learning which consists of a set of skills that help us become self-disciplined, manage our emotions, work well with others, and achieve all our goals in life. A multitude of research studies show time and time again that students strong in SEL will thrive in all areas of their lives, including their academics, career, mental and physical health, relationships, finances, and so on. The Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning also known as CASEL, is a trusted source for high quality information about SEL. They support schools and policymakers around the nation with tools and resources to support the implementation of high quality SEL. CASEL has identified five social and emotional learning competencies. Self-awareness is the ability to accurately recognize your own emotions, thoughts, and values and understand how they influence your behavior. It includes identifying emotions, accurate self-perception, recognizing strengths, weaknesses, self-confidence, and self-efficacy. Self-management involves self-discipline in regulating your emotions, thoughts, and behaviors in different situations so you can reach your goals. It includes impulse control, stress management, self-discipline, self-motivation, goal setting, and organizational skills. Social awareness is the ability to empathize and understand the perspectives of others, including those from diverse backgrounds and cultures, and understand social and ethical norms for behavior. Relationship skills involve communication skills, conflict resolution, and working with diverse groups of people and ideas. And responsible decision-making involves making good decisions, taking into account the impact of your choices on yourself, others, and your community. It includes identifying problems, analyzing situations, solving problems, evaluating, reflecting, and ethical responsibility. The red skills are related to the self. The blue are social skills. And when you integrate these, you make responsible decisions. The Mindset Mastery SEL curriculum addresses these five competencies comprehensively. Okay, so in the chat, um, please share the following. How are the ideas and information connected to what you already know? What new ideas broadened your thinking or extended it in a new direction? And what challenges or questions do you have about the information that was presented in the video? So just take a minute to um, think about that. And you can just, you know, you could share um, one or more responses. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm just going to, I just wanted to share where this comes from. It's called Connect, Extend, Challenge. So, you know, pretty simple to figure out why. 
Um, and it comes from the visible thinking toolbox at, um, from Project Zero at Harvard. And their miss mission is to um, understand and nurture human potentials. Really um, what they're, what they do is they, um, they make they want they want to make thinking visible so that um, because when we understand and this is you know from an educational perspective if we understand why our students are thinking what they're thinking it's much easier to teach them because it's easier to see where the gaps are um, so the toolbox highlights thinking routines that um, were developed across a number of the research projects at Project Zero. And the thinking routine is a set of questions or a short sequence of steps that are used to scaffold and support student thinking. Um, and so these are designed to deepen students thinking and make it visible. Um, and also to help students like start to be able to identify the thinking moves and really build their metacognitive skills because as you know, the video said self awareness is one of the skills that we really, you know, that helps with Social, in social emotional learning, it's one of the skills that we are working toward both for children and for adults. So these routines um, really help to build those skills. And this link will be um, provided in the resources, uh, the resource links that I'm going to share with you at the end of the um, at the end of the class. And um, please, if someone can just remind me, because I realized at the end of the last course that I facilitated, I forgot to share the resources. So um, I wanna make sure that I do that because there's actually a bunch of really good stuff. Um, okay, so I'm not seeing anyone's thoughts on any of that, but hopefully um, the information connected to some of the things that you knew, you know, added on. And if you have questions about any of it, you know, please feel free to ask. Okay, so Castle Five, which was referred to in um, in the video, is the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, and they address five um, broad and interrelated areas of competence, um, which are the social awareness, self management, social self awareness, social awareness, self management, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. Um, and, you know, lots of country uh, schools, school districts across the country have used the Castle Five um, from preschool through high school to adapt these, you know, standards and competencies and help students um, to provide to grow in these areas. Um, and this is true in New York State. So self-awareness is recognizing your emotions and their impact on your behavior. Self-management is regulating those emotions so that you can achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Um, responsible decision-making is making good choices. Um, relationship skills are developing positive relationship skills and social awareness is empathizing with others. Okay, so um, the this is the first activity that you're gonna try. It's called the Rosebud Thorn, the Rosebud Thorn exercise. And you can do it um, as a journal um, activity, or you can do it, you could do it orally in your class um, or around the dinner table. But Journaling is a really good way to help students start to set goals and become more independent learners. Um, and it also supports students in the growing their self-efficacy, their academic self-esteem and growth mindset, which is the belief that we can change and grow. Um, and so students, this helps because students start to, over time, and sometimes it takes a little while, but they start to identify something positive and then something that is challenging and something that they might need help with. Um, so this is an activity that you can try with your students, um, but it's also in your note catcher. It's activity one in your note catcher. So just take a minute and jot down some thoughts for yourself. You're not gonna share them um, unless you would like to, in which case we would love to see them, but just take a minute um, to think about it and write down some answers to those questions. 
Um, so journaling can help with self-esteem because it starts to build self-connection. And really the key to everything is self-connection because the better you know yourself, the better you're able to make decisions that are aligned with who you really are. If you're not connected to yourself, it's much easier to kind of get pulled into whatever is happening around you. Um, and if you know, you're surrounded by good people, that's great. If you're not, then I, it can be problematic. So, um, you know, journaling is a really great way to start to connect with yourself. And it's also a way to become more thoughtful about like what you're doing and why you're doing it and become more aware. And then you also, and to set goals that, and follow through on them. And the more you're able to kind of commit to a goal and show up and do the things that you say you're going to do, that builds a level of self-trust, which also builds self-esteem. But that's a great question. Okay. Um, so using decision-making scenarios in your classroom, this pushes their thinking about the choices that they make and, or could make in specific situations. And it provides students with developmentally appropriate scenarios and prompts them to give them like, to really think about what they might do in a given situation. Um, so a decision-making scenario is a made up but realistic situation that a student might encounter. So after thinking, you know, hearing or reading about a situation, like you see your best friend cheat on a test, um, you know, somebody, your best friend is getting involved with a gang. Um, it asks you to think about what you would do in that situation. And students then have the opportunity to think about it, write about it, and to discuss their thoughts or what they think the right right course of action would be. Um, there is a scenario in your note catcher. So in a minute, I'm going to give you a chance to rewrite it in um, a way that's developmentally appropriate for your students. But first, I'm going to walk you through how this is going to help your students develop their SEL skills. Okay, so I, using a gradual release of responsibility is a recommended way to do um, a, a, a scenario so that you have the opportunity to model the process for your students because it may not be something that they're familiar with. Um, and so they need some insight into what it would look like. So I would start by reading one and discussing it as a class and model your own thinking, including a think aloud. So, you know, just thinking about talking to students um, about, you know, if this, if I came across the situation of my friend cheating on a test, some of the things that I would think about would be, you know, that cheating is wrong. I might think about the fact that if I, you know, if I were gonna tell someone, who would I tell? Is that being a snitch? What happens to my friendship? How will I feel if I don't you know, tell anybody? Whatever, any of the thoughts that you might have. And then you can also give your students a chance to talk to, talk with their peers in a respectful manner. And for the first one, you might wanna do it as a class discussion um, and just kind of, get the temperature in the room, see what kids are thinking. And again, there's no right or wrong answer here. We, it's kind of, we want to look at this as an opportunity for kids to start to think about these situations. So they may come up with solutions that you don't think are the best. You may want to play devil's advocate, but you probably, unless it's really egregiously wrong, um, you may want to just give them the space to think about it and point out that there might be other choices. Um, th so the second part is the we do, where the students would read and discuss the scenario in, in pairs or small groups. 
um, and then the, they would discuss it and then the class would come back to discuss. Obviously, you've got to think about developmentally, does that work for your students if you're, because I think this can be done with, you know, pre-K or, you know, kindergarten students, it would look a little bit different, but the same general process, but to, you know, the degree that's appropriate. And then the you do is giving students a scenario to read um, and maybe have them journal about it before they discuss it. And then after the discussion to reflect on, you know, in their journals as well. And again, it really depends on your students. If you, you know, you have enough trouble getting kids to write about anything, maybe you give them the option of journaling. It's, you know, but you don't push them on it. They may be engaged and want to, and want to write about it. They might not. But what's really important here is giving them the opportunity to experience this process, whether they write, you know, writing about it is a whole other level that deepens their thinking. But, you know, again, it's really about getting them to experience it in some way. Okay. The other thing to think about is, you know, giving them sentence starters to make sure that the conversation is respectful. Um, so, you know, the things like, I see what your point, but I think that, or I, I agree with this, but I disagree with that, or, you know, whatever I'd like to add on, you, you know, anything like that. These are, this list is not exhaustive. Um, I've seen lots of teachers use these in academic areas. Same, same idea. Okay, so now you are going to go into your note catcher and there are a couple of scenarios in there. You can pick one or two and write, um, you know, think about developmentally, it, does it match your, you know, is it a high school scenario and you teach third grade? Is it a third grade scenario and you teach high school? Is it a high school scenario and you teach high school? Like, it, how would you tweak it? Um, that kind of thing. So take a couple of minutes. I'm going to give you, it's 2.56. I'm going to give you till three o'clock just to think about that and then we will come back. I'm gonna stop sharing for the moment. Actually, no, I won't so that you've got the sentence starters there, whoops. Just wanna see, oh, okay. So this is the, this is the scenario, apologies. I was thinking it was in the note catcher. Um, this is the scenario. So look at it, tweak it if needed and then we will talk about it. And I am going to stop sharing so I can put the note catcher in the chat. Wanda, thank you for sharing. I love that.
Okay. Anyone have any thoughts um, or comments about this process? Do you think it would be helpful? Have you tried it in your class or something similar? Okay, well, if you have any thoughts or comments, put them in the chat. So this is just an example of if you were going to rewrite that scenario for a first grader, this is just an example of what it might look like. The other thing I think about, I think that is, you know, with this is to have students, you know, write down what they would do and then explain their thinking. And that doesn't have to be done in writing. It can be, but it could just be a conversation. Why would you, you know, why would you tell an adult? Why wouldn't you tell an adult? What would, you know, what do you hope would happen if you did whatever it is that you, you know, you think you would do? What would be the consequence of doing that? What would be the consequence of doing something different? And just really kind of pushing kids thinking a little bit. So you can use this, you know, to, if you wanted to plan, um, any scenario that you could think of, this can help you, you know, walk through, walk your students through. Okay, so. All right, so in this part of the session, we have a bunch of resources for you to read through um, in one of these three areas. So self-awareness and self-management, social awareness and relationship skills, and, and the third one is responsible decision-making, which incorporates both. Um, so you are going to be given a Padlet link. which I am going to put in the chat. Um, and so if you go to that link, and I'm gonna share my screen for a second. I can find, uh, maybe I'm not gonna share, let's see. There we go. Okay, so this is the Padlet that you, um, have access to um and you are going to pick i mean if you want to pick you know one from each category whatever you want to do um but just take i'm going to give you like 10 minutes because we're actually running ahead of schedule so just take some time to you know read through some of the um the resources that are here and think about, you know, how you might use them in your classroom. And you can, you know, you could pick a couple, you could just pick one thing. I think sometimes, um, you know, it, let's face it, everyone's overwhelmed. You're being asked to do a hundred things in five minutes, right? Like it's a lot. We, I know that. I think most people know it, but I think we also forget that teachers are under huge amounts of pressure. So I don't want to ignore that in any way. Um, and I don't want to make your lives harder than it already is. So when you're thinking about these strategies, think about how some of them, like the scenario, that is something that you would take, you'd have to take a part of a period to do. But some of these other things can be really small 
but have a lot of impact. Like for example, the rosebud thorn thing or thorn, whatever. That is something you can do in a couple of minutes. It could even be an exit ticket. It could be a check-in. It could be in Google Classroom that a kid just knows it's there. Like for Miss Smith, anytime you just do that, if you need help and you don't feel like you want to go up and say something and like the teacher's going to reach out or whatever it is. So just think about how can you kind of slide some of these things into the practices that you already have in your classrooms, whether they're SEL strategies or just academic strategies to just make a little bit of difference. Cause sometimes a small step can make a huge difference for a child. Um, so I don't want to overwhelm you any more than you already are. Um, and I, but I think that if you can incorporate some of these things, it's going to be, well, amazing for your students and also could make your life a little easier in the end. It can definitely impact some behavioral issues and just help students feel like they're being seen and heard. And that, you know, you might be the only person in their lives that is doing that for them. So take a couple of minutes, explore, um, see what looks good. Again, you will be given all of these links at the end of the session. Um, so don't worry about, you know, if you want to copy a link, feel free, but I will provide that for you. In fact, I'm going to do it while you guys are working so that I don't forget. And I'm here if you have questions.
Okay. Um, hopefully you had a little bit of time. I'm going to do something I haven't done before, but it's kind of, it's the way this is planned. I just haven't done it. Um, I'm going to put you guys into breakout rooms for just a couple of minutes to give you a chance to um, just to talk about what you've seen and share some thoughts and ideas. So I'm going to put you in groups of five and we'll just do it for a few minutes because I know everyone's tired. Um, it's the end of the day, but give it a try and just share one or two things with a colleague because I feel like when I do this in other um, courses, people end up feeling like they they walk away with something, um, something extra. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so last quick activity in your note catcher, just jot down one thing that you will 
do immediately, one thing you'll work on, and one thing that you're going to learn more about. And if you'd like to drop any of those in the chat, that would be great. All right. And um, as I said earlier in the uh, course, Solved is um, a CTLE provider. Um, you should receive your CTLE, CTLE credit within 24 hours of the course. Um, and we have now automated our system. Um, so that you should it shouldn't you should expect to receive it within 24 hours if for some reason that you do, you do not receive your certificate or you have a question about something maybe it's another course that you haven't received something about you can um, email admin at solvedconsulting.com i'm going to put that in the chat they will help you out. But again, um, I think that we have perfected our system. So you should get something, um, you know, pretty quickly. I'm also going to repost the resources in the chat. It is a hyperlink document to all of the so the videos that you saw the padlet is there um any other articles that parts of the course were based on um the castle competencies the project zero um thinking toolbox all of those things are linked so please um feel free to you know use all of those i hope that you do use all of those resources and um, also share them with colleagues. Um, the next thing that I wanted to let you know is that we have, oh, here, let me. As I said, we have 36 courses that we are offering for CTLE credits. So you can scan um, the synchronous or the, so, and they're offered both synchronously on Monday afternoons from 2.30 to 3.30 and asynchronously, you can download them at any time if that is easier for you. Um, if you came in late today or you got uh, bumped out, which I know happens from time to time, um, and you missed, you know, more than 10 minutes of the course, I highly encourage you to download the asynchronous video and just, you know, watch the parts that you missed. Um, so you can, again, you can scan the QR code or you can go to solvedconsulting.com and um, go to the CTLE tab. Any questions on any of that? Okay. And then the next thing is if you refer six people from the DOE um, to any of our synchronous or asynchronous courses, you will receive, um, okay, hold on just a second. I see your text about the asynchronous barcode. Um, if you refer six people, six DOE staff members, um, to the courses, you will receive a $50 Amazon gift card for your classroom. Um, and I have a, um, a survey for you um, to fill out if you would like to. It is, um, it's optional, but it's really helpful. So I encourage you to fill it out. If you don't, that's totally fine. Um, but it really does help us know if what we're offering is useful and, you know, all of those. So, 
that's there. Um, you know, you can fill it out now before you log off. We have a couple of minutes and then it's done or you can fill it out um, at your leisure, although preferably today, if you can, um, you don't have to. And see what I can do about that uh, QR code. I'm gonna give you the link to our website, which might be easier.